Hello, friends. Today, I am joined by Dennis Denoya, known by his students as Mr. D. Thank you for joining with us today. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, Dennis has been immersed in education for over 30 years. He holds an MA in education from the University of South Florida and has been a Florida State Certified Secondary Mathematics teacher since 1988. Now, Mr. D works with students from around the world on a variety of topics, including math and life skills and test prep and more. He has a deep passion for helping connect educational concepts to everyday life and exposing students to endless possibility and potential for their futures. Through his classes, curriculum, speaking engagements, his team and resources, Mr. D strives to provide families with empowering solutions and rich understanding for life. And my daughter has actually been taking classes from you for a couple years and is super excited that I'm chatting with you today. So I might have to give her a sneak peek on this podcast episode. <laughs> That's so great. Good, 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 good. <laughs> well, just to begin with, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and how you got started teaching math? Yeah, I, you, wait, you kind of summed it up there, right? So I, um, you know, I kind of, uh, I backed into math. It wasn't my, it was my, my, my first degree. My first degree was in business. And I realized very early on that uh, the corporate world was not for me. And uh, I actually was working with a, a teenager through a youth group that I was a youth group counselor way back in my early 20s. And uh, I was working with this young fellow and he says, hey, do you think you can help me with my algebra? I'm like, yeah, okay. I took algebra in college or, you know, I took it in high school. Sure, right? And we worked on it together and he, he said to me, he said, wow, he goes, you know, he goes, you explained this better than my teacher did. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But I had so much fun doing it that I realized, oh, I think there's a pathway here. And so I visited the, visited the local school board in uh, Pinellas County in Florida, which is, uh, I'm, I'm from the Florida area, and sat down with them. And I said, so if I was going to be a teacher, what do I need? And they said, well, you just need a couple more math classes. And I said, oh, okay. I thought I'd teach business, right? Because that was my background. And they said, no, no, you have more math credits than anything else. You could be a math teacher. And it just turned out back in the late 80s, there was a shortage for math teachers. And so they were anxious to get people in. So I took the credits I needed. Next thing I knew, I was in the classroom. That's what got me started. And then uh, I decided as a public school teacher, I worked in the public schools for 13 years, and then it was time to move on. And so I moved on and uh, I ran a tutoring company for a while, and the tutoring company was doing really, really well, but it was still not quite my passion. Uh, and then uh, around 2008, Mr. D. Math started. In 2010, we started recording videos, and here we are. Wow. I love that story because it's so, so unique and it shows that you just had something that you enjoyed and you, it started really re more with relationship, like concern about an individual student than um, necessarily like, oh, I'm going to go to school and be a math teacher. But then through those twisted paths, you ended up finding a passion. So Absolutely. Yeah. And if my math teachers from my high school days, if they knew this is where I was today, they would be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was interested in music when I was in high school, so, uh, but it turned out I was better at math than music, so there we go. <laughs> well, all, all of us who have students in your classes are, are thankful for that. Well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, sort of the general topic of high school math. I have so many questions that came my way when I said I was going to be chatting with somebody about high school math. And one of the questions is just sort of like, where do we start? Because with high school math, we know it doesn't actually just start in ninth grade or eighth grade. We're laying a foundation for that math before ahead of time. So there's sort of a twofold question. One, what are those key math topics that a student needs to have under their belt, really understand before they move on to high school level math? And how do we even know if they're ready for algebra? Hmm, that's a that's a great it's a great question. And so I have an answer. I, I don't, you know, it's an answer. We'll say it that way, right? Uh, this is the one, one that I like to use. So, you know, if young people, if they, if they know their time tables, that's, a, that's one of the things that the earliest that you can have them start practicing, whether they're doing it by skip counting or rote memorization, whatever it is for them, that they can really discover their time tables, the earlier the better. Because the older you get, the harder it is to memorize things. So if they can start out early, that's awesome. But once they get the times tables done, they can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and they can do that with, uh, with 
integers or whole numbers, but then also do it with positive and negative numbers, work with fractions and decimals, they're really ready for algebra right then. It's, it's mostly getting those basic skills done. So when students come to us, and usually in middle school, they'll start with our pre-algebra course. So we'll fill in some of the other gaps. We'll fill in things like ratios and proportions and percents and some of the other things to help them get ready for an algebra one course. And then we introduce them to things like graphing and they get to see what square roots are. And so they get a little sampling of what they're gonna see in algebra, but really when the basic skills are done and ready, add, subtract, multiply, divide, and they can do it with fractions, decimals, they can do it with positive and negative numbers. They're really ready to step into the world of algebra. That's really encouraging, I think, for a lot of parents to hear because it can feel so intimidating, right? Like we want to make sure we're setting our kids up for success and not everyone had a good high school math experience. So there can be that intimidation factor, like how do I know I've done enough? But right. that's, you know, that's not too complicated. We, we can all, I think, handle a bit of multiplication and division. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, one of the things I've noticed as, especially as a second generation homeschooler, is in those early years, a lot of homeschool parents just, they want to do things in these unique ways. They're out of the box thinkers. They're really focusing on students understanding the whys. You know, why do things work? Why does this math, you know, why does this math equation work or whatever? And then high school years hit and all of a sudden this very creative outside the box homeschool teacher is like, ah, and gets all scared and goes right back to school at home and kind of just regurgitating facts. There's something about that high school transcript that makes us nervous. So mm. how can we avoid that and still encourage our teens to really understand what they're doing, you know, why things work, why math works and how it works instead of just regurgitating information for a test? Yeah, so I love that question. I want you to know that that may be my favorite question that we'll talk about today. I, I don't know what the other ones are, but that was for sure so far my favorite. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of answer the question with a question, right? So as a homeschool mom, as being a homeschool mom, and for all the moms and dads out there that are listening right now, if you notice when you're teaching, especially like at the elementary grade, and you're doing all these cool out of the box kinds of things, and you're really looking, have you ever noticed that when you're teaching your young person something, that all of a sudden it makes sense to you, and when it never made sense when you were in school, right? And so why not apply that same idea to the high schoolers? So what I mean by that is that instead of, because I'm gonna take a guess that probably for you, Algebra 2 is not something you wanna go back and learn again. You know, and most, most uh, when you know, kids get to high school, trying to go back and remember all of that is difficult. So you learned it, you forgot it, now you're trying to remember it again. So it gets tough. And then you're trying to explain it and your young person doesn't learn the way you do. <laughs> it just doesn't go well, right? Oh yeah. So, you know, what we, and we always encourage students to do this, and we actually do this in our test prep courses. One of the best ways that we have students understand working with upper level math is to teach someone else. And so we ask them to go back and teach their, teach their parents, teach their friends, teach their brothers, teach their sisters. But if you can, if you're going to let them do their own thing, like they're doing one of our programs where if they're doing our live class and then they have work to do after that, or if they're doing our self-paced class, it's very self-directed for them. But at the end of the time that they finish a, a, a section, what do they do? And so the best thing to do is to schedule time each week and even maybe every day, every other day, whatever works, but then meet with them and have them teach you about what they're learning about. So what that does for you is it lets you know how it's going, right? What it does for them, which is much more important, is it gives them an opportunity to start making some connections. Because when they start to explain it, just like you've noticed as teaching and say, when you explain it, you understand that you have a different level of relationship. There's a mastery starts to happen. The same thing happens for young people. Let them teach you what they're learning. Uh, and here's a kind of a little, uh, a little hot tip about that. In the beginning, it won't go very well, but hang in there, it gets better, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if, if, if at first it, it seems a little awkward to push through that awkward stage, because what yeah. teen doesn't want to be able to, you know, correct their mom and tell them how things work? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and you know, and teenagers are grumpy, so you're going to have a grumpy teenager who doesn't want to do it, that's the last thing they want to do, and they're going to be explaining it to you, and it's awkward for them. So teenage years are already awkward, so now we're asking them to do something that's even more awkward. 
the hardest part for I think for a parent is to try to jump in and save them. And it's like there's nothing to there's nothing there. Let them they'll sort it out. They really will. And it's interesting to watch them do that. Uh, even if they stand there for 30 seconds and they have nothing to say, great, because they're sorting it out for themselves. So that's a that's a good thing. <laughs> You know, last year, my oldest son was in pre-calculus, and at least at the time, you didn't have a pre-calculus class, so I was teaching it myself, Um, and there were so many times when we would get to something, and it had been years since I had studied this stuff. I didn't remember it. He doesn't understand it, and so to be able to come in, too, as a parent, to have to be humble enough to say, yeah, I don't know either, but we can figure this out together. Um, I think that can also be really valuable where your, your teen sees that it's okay for it to be hard and it's okay if you don't get it right away. That Absolutely. process, you're not doing something wrong. Like you're modeling for them how to deal with a challenging topic. Absolutely. That is brilliant. Absolutely. That is a great, yeah. And sometimes discovering it together is great because just even you might see something, they'll see something. And by the time you put it together, you get something even bigger than what either one of you start, thought you'd start out with. Yeah. Oh, that's really awesome. Well, there was a really common question that came up. Again, I I mentioned earlier, I asked on social media what questions people had about high school math. And there was one that was just really common. So I'm actually going to read two questions um, and then ask for your perspective on this. Sure. So one one follower asked, if my kids aren't university bound, how much math do we really need? Algebra is our requirement. I'm thinking some personal finance type math. Do they need more than that? And another mom asks, one of the things I think about is how do I assess how far my kid needs to go with math? How do I tell when a kid just needs to be done with algebra and some practical math and when a kid needs to push on through to higher math, especially if their goals or future aspirations are unclear? How can I keep my child's options open, give them the skills they need, while at the same time respecting who they are as an individual? This was such a common question, so I'm really eager to hear hear your perspective on this. Uh, okay, so well, one thing, unfortunately, and I say this uh, unfortunately because it's un- it is unfortunate. It depends on what your state says is needed for graduation. So that would be the first thing. Like, what is it that you have to do? And typically, there's typically there's algebra one, geometry algebra two. Uh, some states will require four math credits and other states more than that. So uh, not more than that, but something different. So um, sometimes it's three and like what the person you said there, if it was just algebra one, that's great. And then, so what do you do? So that's the first thing is find out what's required in your state. And then the second thing from there, once you fulfill those requirements, if there's still additional math credit or math credits or math courses to take, then if, if the young person does know what they're interested in, you know, they're interested in a field that even if it's a, a trade field, it'd be, you'd be amazed to find out uh, how much math is involved in people that go into trade industries like landscaping and plumbing and you know, um, people that do those, kind, that get into those kind of fields, which actually pay really well. So that's a great field to get into. Um, but getting there, find someone in the industry and ask them, and you can say, hey, you know, I'm interested in your field and I have this one more math credit to take or another math class to take. What would you recommend? What do you think would really help me prepare for what I'm interested in doing? And then look from there. Um, if young people don't know what they're interested in, one thing is maybe even do like a little career interest survey with them. Find out the kind of fields that it seems are appropriate for what they're interested in and the kind of things that they like to do. We, um, we do that with young people. We, we have a, a whole survey that we do with them. And we have a, a college and career readiness class that really is that. It's whether you're going to college or you're going to go into the career, you know, into your, uh, into your work world, what that looks like. And we're always surprised to find out how often the students that will come into the class and say, yeah, I don't know what I want to do with, in my life. And by the time the class is over, they do because we let them explore and find out, well, what's important to you? And then start interviewing, like find people in that field and find people that are, that are able to say, yeah, this is the math courses that I think you should take. Um, you know, all the math courses have a little different flavor to them. You know, geometry uh, was not my favorite course when I was a high school student. In fact, it was, um, yeah, it was towards the bottom of my favorite courses as a high school student, right? But when I started teaching geometry years later, one of the things I really got out of what it is in geometry was the ability to think in a way that allowed me to solve problems, but to do it where it wasn't in that, like in algebra, it's kind of step by step. You go from this step to this step, you undo this, you undo that, and you get your answer. 
In geometry, it's not really like that. In geometry, you see where you're starting, you know where you're ending, and you have to figure out how to get there. And, you know, and I, and I think if any young person is going to be an attorney, take geometry, because it teaches you how to present an argument, which is really great. And that's why we do proofs with um, young people. Uh, it's not that I think that they're going to remember the side, side, side postulate for triangle, you know, congruence. Like, that's probably not going to stick with them. But how to create a proof and how to present it and how to present your argument. And I don't mean argue in the sense of like you're arguing where you're butting heads, but argument where you're trying to be able to say what it is you're trying to say, and it's a valid kind of progression in, your, in what you're speaking. So, you know, for it, it really comes down to what's important. Um, for some people, if you're headed in the business route, definitely a financial, a financial kind of course. Um, we, had, we just put together a consumer math course that we have for students now, and it's all project-based. So there's not tests and things like that in there, but it's really more about them discovering things that are out there in the world, everything from check writing, we put a time management section in there and goal setting for, for students in there because that's important for them. And it does show up uh, in the world. And, and then of course, and then they're working on, you know, how to finance a car and balancing a checkbook and all the other different things that are in there that you typically see from a consumer math uh, kind of course and you know, working with recipes and conversion factors and all those good things. So it's all in there. Um, and so I think it mostly comes down to what are young people interested in? And, and finding out from them, what, what do they really like to do? Uh, and then starting to look at what kind of math courses would supplement that and would give them something that they need so that when they get to where they're going, they have the skills they need. I love that perspective too, to go and talk to people in the field, you know, whether it's a plumber or a lawyer or a businessman, whatever, and to find out from those people. Um, and that also teaches your student to be able to take that initiative, have that awkward conversation, trying to ask somebody, you know, about, about the math. But I also really love what you said that things like geometry have value beyond, you know, whether that student's ever going to remember those postulates and theorems, but it's really training them how to think and how to analyze information, which is going to apply no matter if they're in a math field, you know, long-term or not. And I think that Absolutely. really, yeah, and that really goes along with the next question I had for you, because, you know, I'm sure their parents listening have had the experience with their students saying, but when am I ever going to use this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, oh, what's okay. The answer? <laughs> are you ready? Here comes the answer, right? Uh, you may not. <laughs> That's, that's actually the answer to the question. I don't know if you're going to use it or not. Um, so it's, you know, and if it's like, if you start looking at that again, you know, you can go on, you can go on the, go online and research it and find out when, you know, who uses this in, uh, you know, who uses these kinds of things. So, you know, we, we, unfortunately, we make up answers to try to answer that question. But the real truth is, we don't know. You may use it, but you may not use it. And here's a great thing, you know, when I was 16 years old, I, there was two things that I wanted to do more than anything. Actually, there was three, there was a third one. So the first one was I wanted to play baseball. And the second one was I was a musician, I was a trumpet player, and I also was pretty good, you know, back in the day, and I, I still play a little bit now. But, and then the third one was I wanted to run a business. So if you notice when I was 16, uh, being involved as a math educator was not on my list. List. nowhere near it and you know but things change along the way uh so i do run a business it just happens to be i work in the business of education now which is which is really great so you know i think one of the one of the things for young people is that they may say well, when am i ever going to use this and the answer is right now we don't know but it's actually a valid answer because most people when they're 16 or 17 years old some, oftentimes they don't know what they're going to be doing with their life so we really can't say maybe you will be maybe we won't be but it's here's here's where we are <laughs> yeah definitely and i al always tell my kids like i don't care if you're going to use this or not it's just cool to learn about <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so much of it is um we we actually added to our courses for students that want to take that you know that honors perspective of the course we have them go into the course and we have them we pick a, every every chapter we pick one section out of the chapter and we tell them go find out where this shows up in the in, People use this phrase, the real world, and I, I really don't, I think that's a weird phrase to use, 
because if you're if that's the real world, then that must mean everything else we're doing is a pretend world. And it just seems kind of funny to be doing school in a pretend world, right? So I always tell people it's in the, you know, it's in the world outside of a math class, right? So where do you find this and where does it show up? And we have them write about it and actually go out and, you know, and find out different different kind of work that's out there and different kinds of uh, where these things can be applied. And we get the greatest responses from students and we have them write about it and tell us what they found out and what they discovered. And it's great for them because they can start to see for themselves. Yeah, actually, this, these things do show up. And even if they find out that something may not be the career path that they're going into, they can have a, an appreciation for those who are going into that field. And they can say, oh, wow, well, I know you must have learned about this, this, and this, So, I, which I think is great. Yeah, definitely. Well, I have one more question that came up, and this was a mom who was pretty vulnerable, and she said, you know, she admitted she hadn't done a very good job instilling a love of math up until now. And she wondered, is it too late? So if there's a, a homeschool parent, you know, who has a teen who just doesn't seem like they could care less about math, is it too late to inspire them to at least respect math, if not to love it? Uh, it's definitely not too late. So we get students, and, and the only reason I'm going to say this is because our students tell us. Um, you know, they let us know, I used to hate math, and now we get the response of, now I don't hate it anymore. Some of them get to, now I actually like it. Some of them are like, now I love it. So we find that all the time, that, you know, a lot of times it's just for a young person, they're hating it because they haven't found a way that fits to the way they learn or it hasn't been explained in a way that makes sense to them. And once they get that, they're ready to go. So I think, yeah, so it's not too late, not at all. Oh, that's an encouragement, I know. Well, my daughter, as I mentioned earlier, loved your geometry class last year and is taking Algebra 2 this year. Now, she had a different kind of perspective than you did as a teen. She actually loved geometry and is not necessarily a huge fan of algebra, but even if she doesn't care for the, the content as much this year, she still is really enjoying um, your classes. Last year, she did a little video uh, as like a thing that you, a challenge you guys had going on and in it, she compared you favorably to Jane Austen, which, you know, for her literary oh. heart, <laughs> it's a very high compliment. <laughs> I remember, I remember that video. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I will. Do, well, and yeah, you know, that's funny. That's actually how we find out a lot about how it's going for students. So we do a contest every February and we ask the students to make a, it's like a quick one minute video. Tell us what's working for you about the course and the program. We make it a big contest and give away prizes. But, but for us, it's how we learn about what's working for them. And if there's something working, they, they're, they're not shy. They tell us that too. Uh, so it's really great because that's how we find out how it's going. And that's often how we find out that they, you know, we get those videos a lot. I used to hate math and now here I am. And then, but you know, it's kind of cool to be confusing. And so rock on, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, could you talk to anyone who's not familiar with the way Mr. D math is set up online? How do you run your courses online and how, do, how does the way you approach these math topics maybe differ from other high school math programs? So, uh, so we, so our courses are set up in two ways, and um, they the students can do it at their own pace because sometimes you know people are into all kinds of different things in their schedules or you know the the way they are, right? So you start, you can start the course whenever whenever it works for you, you end the course when it works for you. Um, but we also do what we call live classes, and our live classes they start in August and they run through May. We meet the students once a week and. In the live classes, what we do is we spend some time laying out for them what to expect during the week. And it's, it's a little bit more like a college experience in a way because you have that one class and you're going to see more than just one, one section outlined for you. And then we do, it's a lot of participation during that class and we ask the kids a lot of questions. And it, you know, for the, most of the students, it's fun, you know, because it's like, you know, we want to keep it so that they're engaged and, and interacting with, with us as the instructors. And, uh, and then they go back and then they have all of the, the same videos that are in the self-paced course are still there for them as well. So they meet with the live class, they go back, they've got additional videos and additional support. We, um, we really encourage the students when they're doing practice problems to be the ones that check the work themselves. 
And so then moms and moms and dads are more like an accountability coach to be able to check in with them and see how they're doing, which is why we ask the students to teach the parents. That way, you know right away how it's going. But one of the things, uh, it was one of the things that I found when I was in college that I was struggling in a calculus course. And so they didn't have the internet back then, right? So I went to the local bookstore and I just bought as many calculus books as I could find. By the way, it was in a used bookstore, right? But <laughs> I was one of those poor college students. But, uh, but I, you know, I laid them all out and I kept looking for examples of the kind of problem I was working on in my own course. And what I found was that I learned like that. That was so helpful for me to see something worked out and then I could do it myself. And so we want, you know, we, for our students, we tried to address as many learning styles as possible. One being they needed to see it. They needed to see it all worked out. They could do it. Another, they can go to the videos and they can watch the videos. They can hear it. They can start practicing with it. And then for others, they need to talk to people. So we, we set up help sessions for the students to come to. And we'll do those three days a week where the students can come in and they can come in wherever they are in their course and they can come in and ask a question and they can email us anytime. And so we have, uh, we have this amazing young person that works for us and he's done, he did all of our courses all the way from pre-algebra, all the way through pre-calculus. He's a senior in college now. And he likes math more than I do. There's, there's just no question about it. He's getting his degree in math and physics, a double major, which is like just crazy. And he still has time to work with us, which is really awesome. But what he does is he logs in, and this is amazing, but he logs in every day, six days a week, Monday through Saturday, from 9 a.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And he answers students' questions and emails. And so, you know, our students that ask a question, people always ask us, how do you do that so fast? Because we're actually checking you know, all day long and seeing what questions people have. And on Sunday, he doesn't start till five. So he, he gets a little break on Sunday. But for him, he'll log in at nine o'clock, check what there is to do, and then he logs on, he comes back at 10. And then if he does have a class for him in his own, um, in his own college experience, he might be a couple of hours and he comes back and does it. But he's been working with us that way now for two years. And he, I, when he finally realized that he was like, he goes, you know, I was going to go be a math professor. He said, but I think I want to stay with, with you guys. And I said, that's great because we're keeping you. So... <laughs> <laughs> so for us, it's, you know, it's about communicating with students and giving them a, you know, that's, I think that's one thing that we do is we make sure that we get back to students quickly. Um, and parents tell us that all the time. It's like when they email us that they're always like, how did you do that so fast and get back to us? But I think that what we try to do is to address all the different learning styles. And that has had us have some success and being able to have students have success. And that's really, that's really what it's all about. Yeah, that's definitely been something we've noticed with Emma being able to send an email to get a question or, you know, pop into one of the, the live sessions. So she does the self-paced course um, because she likes to get ahead and, and work at her own pace. But to know that she has that live tutoring session available or live help session um, is always just nice for me to know that's in our back pocket too if she gets stuck on something or I don't have time to help her. So it's, it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Mr. D Math is now more, much more than math. What are some of the other courses that you guys offer? Mm, well, we have we have at three levels of American Sign Language now, and uh, we have the Consumer Math is a new course. Oh, okay. So, this you know what your 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 audience is going to be the first people to hear this. This is really exciting. So we um, we've been piloting this year, and we're going to launch it for next year. We have what's called a pre a preparing for pre algebra class. It's kind of like a pre pre algebra class. So wow. we'll have a, a live version of that. We'll have a self paced version of that. And so we've been getting the course developed this year. Um, we brought on a new teacher who is just perfect with that age group, and so um, so she's been helping develop the materials. She's just awesome. Um, she sent me one of her recordings, and she said, "Hey." would you do me a favor? Could She goes, I let the recording run a little too long at the end. Could you just edit it out? So I was like, sure. So I'm listening to it. And the young people that were on there, there was two boys that stayed on with her. And they were just having so much fun telling them about all that was going on in their life. And they were so excited. And one of them in the Lego, Lego land. And it, just got, it was just great. But you could just tell it was like this natural, just, just, just great relationship between her and the students. So it was great. So we're going to have that available next year. So we're really excited about that. Um, we have a, a partnership with a group out of Orlando, Florida that does a computer programming um, course. So we have that. We have a study skills course. We just launched, this is really cool, we just launched um, Train Like an Olympic Runner. So we have a, um, he's a, uh, he's a, he's trained Olympic athletes in the past and he works with uh, people that are trying to, that are going to want to be Olympic athletes. 
and so um, he put a course together and we have that online and then um and then my own kids got involved in the in the game and we have uh, my son is a flamenco dancer so uh he and so we got a he also was learning the guitar in a, in the spanish flamingo world so we put together two courses that teach flamingo dance and flamingo guitar and those are like entry level kinds of courses um and we've got we've got even uh, i think i think we even have a youtuber class that that we just started doing some work with you so we're always looking at having new things come in and what's really great is that the courses that people um create with us have come from either our former students who went on to college and then wanted to create their own courses uh or we have um people that are you know parents that have either parents that came in and we had our computer programming guys it's their daughter was doing our math class and then we started talking and they're like where are your classes set up and this is what we do so it was like a great uh partnership that we could create with them so we try to keep it in the family so it's been it's been good so far that is fantastic and last year uh, my son and i were able to um peek in at one of your act prep courses as well um i think mr h right. taught that one and i i right. thought those were just fantastic really teaching students how to kind of approach these tests without feeling intimidated, just sort of learn the strategies for test taking and things like that. So I, I every class I've, yeah, every class <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen, I'm just uh, super impressed. There's just right. about anything you might want to know. Yeah. So when, you know, the other course that we have, and so the, the SAT and ACT prep has been awesome, but the other course that we have that um, for me uh, is probably, it's, it's probably become one of my favorite courses to work with is our college and career readiness class and that class does everything from uh it's similar to the consumer math class but it's really giving students a chance to really look at um you know where they're what they're up to we actually have guest speakers come in um we have a college professor that joins us every time and he's from he's an online college professor and he's just so great he's, he and i've been friends for a really long time um we've had people come in from the company ea sports we had um we had a whole uh, software development team come in and these were all young people that were, well, I say young people, they were probably in their late, late 20s, you know, or so. But it was great because the students were all interested in what kinds of video games were they into. So they got to talk about everything that they do. And so the students got to see, wait a minute, these guys are professional people, but they're still act like kids. And it's like, but they have this amazing job and they're working with, you know, Fortune 500 kinds of companies in the software that they're developing. So it's just been it's been great the kinds of people that we can come in with and we teach them in that course we work with them on the stock market and how the stock market works and why you need to save money and what it looks like to you know to have a portfolio that you can have and and how to invest and invest wisely so uh it, that kind of a course is great um and then of course we're always and we're focused on where what are you interested in college track career track and then how to research a college and how to find out what the college is interested in and the dynamics and the demographics of the college so you can find out what's right for you. So I love that course. That's uh, That's been become a favorite, so. And then you're really coming alongside. I know as a homeschool mom, you have, you're like, okay, I'm the parent, I'm the homeschool teacher. And now in high school, I'm also like having to figure out all this college and future stuff. So to know that you have somebody in your corner who can kind of come alongside and help help through that process is is really helpful. Well, I'm asking each of my questions, uh, each of my guests, rather, this question this season, and that's just, what are you personally reading lately? Mm. Well, so I have this one book that we actually use in our college and career readiness class, and we use excerpts out of the book. So I end up reading this almost all year long. It's called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And uh, it's, uh, if you haven't read that, uh, it, actually what's cool about it is it was written a really, really long time ago. And so the copyright is expired, so you can download it on the internet. You can see the whole book right online. Um, it's awesome. I've, I've probably read that book more times than any other book. So that, that would be what I'm working on right now. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. I'll have to check that out, and I'll definitely include a, a link to that in the show notes. Okay, well, great. Mr. D, thank you so much for joining us today. And where can people find you on the internet? Oh, yeah, mrdmath.com. And uh, there's this mrdmath.com. Fantastic. And I will have that linked up as, as well as lists of all the courses we talked about today over in the show notes for this episode at humilityanddoxology.com.